Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be a full face of MAC Cosmetics. I have been a user of MAC Cosmetics for probably 25 years. There are some products sitting in front of me that have been staples in my personal makeup collection and in my freelance makeup kit for years. Some of these are products that I have repurchased over and over and over throughout the years. When I was going through my makeup stash collecting products to use in this video, I came across this palette right here. This is a Z palette full of individual MAC eyeshadows. I have not touched this palette in years. It was in my freelance makeup kit and some of these look barely used. Powder products don't typically go bad, but I don't think I will be using any of these today. I am most likely going to be using a combination of these two palettes right here that I adore, especially for travel. One of them is the Burgundy Times 9 and the other one is the Semi Sweet Times 9. These are both fantastic. And then I will be using a MAC foundation concealer. Well, it's a full face of MAC, so I'm really excited. I have been wanting to do this video for quite a while. I've posted other one brand makeup tutorials and in the past when I have asked what other brands my viewers wanted to see, a lot of you said MAC. So without any further ado, let's see how I achieved this makeup look using only MAC Cosmetics. Oh, before I get into applying the makeup, this is going to be a chatty makeup application. I feel like the world is just really heavy right now. Anytime you turn on the news, everything is just so depressing and overwhelming. So I want to lighten the mood a little bit and take us back to a time where things weren't so scary and volatile and heavy or maybe they were and we just weren't paying attention because we were younger, we were more carefree. In the early to mid 90s when MAC first came out, I was finishing high school and starting college. So I was thinking we would start off by talking about our favorite 80s and 90s heartthrobs. And I'm starting the makeup application with this primer called the Studio Fix Mattifying 12 Hour Shine Control. I do have very oily skin. And this primer is fantastic for controlling oil. Is it weird that I don't really remember a lot of 90s heartthrobs? I remember who I was crazy about in the 80s when I was a teenager, like 13, 14. I was obsessed with Kirk Cameron from Growing Pains. Okay, I just now realized the only MAC product I do not have for this video is an eyeshadow primer. I have everything else, but I do not have an eyeshadow primer from MAC. A lot of people use MAC paint pots as an eyeshadow primer, like Soft Ochre or Painterly. However, those have never worked for me as an eyeshadow primer. I just have very, very oily eyelids, so I have to use an actual eyeshadow primer, so I am going to use this one from NARS just because it is sitting close by to where I am filming and it's actually a really good eyeshadow primer. So getting back to 80s and 90s heartthrobs. So on the one hand I was crazy about funny and innocent Kirk Cameron, but then I was also obsessed with John Taylor from Duran Duran. He was everything. And then in the early 90s when all the hair bands were really popular, Kip Winger was a favorite. I feel like I've talked about this in a video before, my obsession with Kip Winger and a lot of those 80s hair bands that I think young girls of today would look at and sort of cringe. They would say, how in the world did you find those men attractive? But they were hot, right? They were Okay, before I get into foundation and concealer, I'm going to do my brows because I have discovered that anytime I use a brow pen to fill in my brows, I have to do them first because if I have foundation and powder and all those other things on my skin already, the pens don't tend to stick. So this is the Shape and Shade Brow Tint in Fling. So this has the brow pen on one side and then it has this little shadow stick on the other side, but I never use that. 
But first, I am going to brush up my brows using a brow soap. You can use any brow soap that you have. MAC doesn't actually make a brow soap. So I'm just using this one from City Color. I find that brushing the brows up like this with a brow soap before using a brow pen is really helpful. Okay, I'm gonna give that about a minute to set, but with the magic of editing, you will not have to wait. All right, I did a little plucking while I was at it, just a few stray hairs. Now I'm going in with the brow tint pen. Now just like with liquid liner, I kind of can't talk and do this at the same time, so I'll play a little background music for you. Wouldn't it have been awesome if I had been able to play some 80s hairband music while I was just doing that? But unfortunately, with copyright, all that, can't do it. Okay, I'm not quite done with the brows. I wanna clean up a little bit under here and kind of give them a little bit of a different shape and soften them. So I'm going to take a flat brush and go into this middle shade. What is this called? These don't have names on them, but it is from the Semi Sweet Times Nine. Again, it's just that middle shade, and I'm going to just kind of touch up the shape a little bit, give them a little bit more definition underneath. You know, it's really bugging me that I can't think of more 90s heartthrobs. I mean, there was Johnny Depp, who has been in the news, as I think we all know, a lot lately. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to Google 90s heartthrobs because it's really bothering me that I can't think of any. That's just crazy. All right, these brows are locked and loaded. They are not going anywhere. All right, I'm grabbing my phone and I am Googling. Oh my gosh, how could I forget Brad Pitt? Legends of the Fall, when I saw that movie on the big screen and Brad Pitt came on the screen, I think I may have had a mild heart attack. And I gotta say, I did really like that movie. For foundation, I would normally use my MAC Studio Fix Fluid. I adore that foundation. I talk about it all the time in videos. But for today's video, I thought I would switch things up and use the Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. This is an excellent foundation for anyone with oily skin, anyone who gets hot flashes, or anyone who sweats a lot. This does not budge. But if you don't like a lot of coverage, you will need to shear it out with either a moisturizer or an oil. I'm going to put a couple of dots right here. This shade, NC35, is a little bit dark for me right now, but it does work when I have a little bit of a self-tan going on. So you're gonna notice that it's just a little bit dark as I apply it. And I'm using my beloved Stands Out sponge. So look at that coverage. Yeah, it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't look cakey. And a little bit goes such a long way. I'm barely putting any on my forehead. Putting a little bit extra by my nostrils. Ugh, I haven't used this foundation in such a long time. I'm mad at myself for that because it is so, ah, because it is so good. Oh, so good. It just makes my skin look flawless without that like heavy, heavy feel. I think I already said that. You know, I love my Estee Lauder Double Wear, but I honestly think this one might be better. I know, I know that's crazy. That's crazy talk because I'm always, always raving about Estee Lauder Double Wear. Hmm, I think I just got an idea for a video. Maybe I will do a comparison and wear test of the MAC Pro Longwear versus the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Let me know in the comments if you would like 
something like that. All right, I think my face is looking good. Now let's do some under eye concealer. This is the Studio Fix 24 hour smooth wear concealer. This is such an underrated concealer. If you want medium to full coverage to cover up dark circles, that bluish purplish tinge right here, this is a great one. And it's not super thick. It's just, it's just really, really good. So if you haven't tried it yet, I do recommend that you do. Um, I put a little bit too much on because now I'm having to go over my lid and spread it out, but that's okay. I am using the A506 brush from the BK Beauty X Angie Hot and Flashy collab. And look at that coverage. And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, hey, does it crease by the end of the day? Does it settle into fine lines? Nope, not in my experience. I'm just taking my Stands Out sponge and blending everything together so it looks a bit more seamless. Okay, have you guys seen Legends of the Fall? If you haven't, you've got to. And then I also saw on Google Leonardo DiCaprio mentioned. I was never a big Leo fan. I mean, I always thought he was a good actor. I don't know if you noticed, but I used a little, but I used a little bit less concealer on this side. Um, I always thought he was a great actor, and funny how he was actually on Growing Pains, which brings me back to Kirk Cameron. Um, I thought he was cute, and I think Leo and I are the exact same age. I think he's also 48 or 49. I don't know. I just, I just never really got the hype over him. Who else? Jonathan Taylor Thomas. No, maybe I was just too old because I was an older teen in the early 90s and then I moved into my 20s. So Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Jared Leto. Now if we go to 80s heartthrobs, yes. Mm-hmm. Rob Lowe. <gasps> Rob Lowe is still gorgeous. Okay, we're gonna talk about Rob Lowe extensively. But first, we are going to set this face with some powders. I'm using the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in light under my eyes, on my lids, all through this area right here. I love these Mineralize Skin Finish powders. I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video that MAC seems to be really making a comeback especially with the younger crowd. I'm seeing it talked about a lot more on social media, especially on TikTok. You know what they say, everything old is new again. I mean, Mac never really went out, but there was several years recently that not a lot of people talked about Mac or used their products. Not a lot of influencers or beauty gurus were using Mac products. So I do not have a contour stick or a cream contour from MAC, but I do have this Mineralized Skin Finish in Dark Deepest that I'm going to use as a contour. And I am just contouring where I usually do, right underneath my cheekbones. And then I will put a little bit right here on my forehead. A little bit on my chin. And I'm taking my finger and I'm running this along the sides of my nose to slim my nose. So that's something that happened to me in the 90s. And don't worry, we're getting back to Rob Lowe. I had my nose done in I think 1994 and it's a mess. I mean, I had a severely deviated septum and I had a bump, but you know, back in the day, we didn't have a way to research doctors the way we do now. My mom did the research and we went to go see two different surgeons and the one that we chose was one that had a really good reputation where I lived, but it is pretty botched. And sadly, there are people who like to call that out when they see videos of mine or TikToks of mine, I'll get comments like, what's wrong with her nose? As if I don't read these comments. 
you should go on Botched. I've addressed this in other videos. I'm not going to go down that road, but um, more and more I have been contemplating getting it redone because I do have such a hard time breathing. And I really discovered that when the mask mandates were in effect, because wearing a mask, when you have a deviated septum and you already have trouble breathing, it was even more difficult. So um, anyway, that's a subject for another day. We are supposed to be talking about lighthearted stuff like teen heartthrobs. Who else loved John Hughes movies? And speaking of Rob Lowe, Basically every movie Rob Lowe was ever in. St. Almost Fire, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, what was that one with Demi Moore uh, about last night? Even though I used the Deep Darkest for my contour, I still am going to go in with a MAC Classic Give Me Sun to do some bronzing. So first was contour and now we are bronzing. Every time I see on the channel guide that about last night is going to be on. I think it's the 80s version, but it's not. It's the remake. And I always get so bummed out because I want to see the original. I want to see Demi Moore and Rob Lowe. I remember when St. Elmo's Fire came out thinking that these people were so old even though they were just in college, but you know, they were living together. And I was like 13, 14 when that movie came out. So I just thought they were all so old, but I, much like my reaction to Brad Pitt in Legends of the Fall, I had the same reaction to Rob Lowe. Just a feeling of how are these men so physically beautiful? All right, I'm going to take a pause from talking about hot men and we're going to do some eyes. Starting off with the semi-sweet and I'm going to go back into that same shade I used for my brows or to sort of touch up my brows. And I'm going to run that all over my lid from my lash line all the way up into my crease. We're doing a very kind of 90s supermodel smoked out classic MAC glam look. Oh yeah, let's talk about the 90s supermodels. They were everything. I mean, I have always been a straight woman, but I could definitely appreciate the beauty of the 90s supermodels. Once in a while, I would get told that I resembled Karen Mulder and I would want to faint. This was after I had my nose done, not before. Um, yeah, I would see her and all the other supermodels on the Chanel runway or the Versace runway and I thought, oh my God, how? is a woman this beautiful? How are these women so freaking gorgeous? So now I'm taking this matte ivory and I am popping that right under the brow bone and sort of diffusing that first shade. Who were your favorite supermodels? I think I really, I thought they all were gorgeous. Christy Turlington, Linda Evangelista, Naomi Campbell, Nikki Taylor. All right, now I'm going to take this shimmering burgundy shade. And with my finger, I'm putting that all over my lid. And because my eyes are hooded, I do have to put my chin up and look down into the mirror so that I can see the entire lid area and cover the entire lid area. And I'm glad I took my press on nails off because now I can get in to that inner corner. When I have those nails on, I cannot reach that area. I mean, I just end up using a brush, which is fine, but this is easier. Okay. Now I want to lighten it up a little bit. So I am going to go into this shade in the upper corner and press that over that first burgundy shade. Mostly concentrating that on the inner corners. Now I think moments ago I said that I was going to do a 90s supermodel look. <laughs> I think by adding the shimmer I just went a little bit more modern. I don't 
recall the 90s supermodels using a lot of shimmer. Those looks were very matte, so. Oops. <laughs> now, I am going to take a tiny angled brush, spray it with some Fix Plus. This bottle was from the Cherry Blossom collection. And I'm going to go into the matte black in the semi-sweet. And I'm going to line my upper lash lines. Again, silence is needed for this part. And then I'm taking a little bit of the black right under the lower lash line and doing a tiny, tiny wing. So I don't know if you can tell, but I got as close to the root of my lashes as possible. And now I'm taking this Morphe brush. It doesn't have a number on it, but just a small shader brush. And I'm going into the gray, the mid-tone gray that's in the middle right here. And I am just going to pat it in the outer corner. So it sort of looks like a smoky winged liner. And then when that's done, I am taking a makeup wipe and cleaning up the edges. And I'm going really high up in an angle to give my downturned eyes a more lifted look. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that concealer that I used and touch up right underneath the wing. Make it really crisp. Now I'm taking the lightest gray from the Semi Sweet palette and just sort of diffusing the upper edges of the entire eye look. And now using a Refer 23 brush, which is one of my favorites, I am going back into that same shade that we used for the brows and for the first smoked out color. And I'm just running that softly under my lower lash lines, just a little bit. I just want a soft, really soft smoke down there. All right, now I'm going to curl my lashes and apply mascara off camera. I'm going to use the MAC Stack Mascara, even though I really don't like it, but this is a full face of MAC, so I'm going to use it. I got the one with the micro brush because that's the one the sales associate said would be best for my wimpy lashes, but I don't know, I don't like it. You know, it's kind of weird. I have not used this mascara in months, although it's actually not that weird because this has happened to me before where I have initially tried a mascara, didn't like it, put it in the drawer, tried it again months later, and now I kind of like it. I don't remember what I didn't like about it before, honestly, but this is going on really nicely. I'm getting length and separation. So weird. It is so weird how this happens with mascaras. I mean, I guess maybe it's because they, I was going to say the air gets to them, but that would dry them out. This one is still very wet, but it's not super wet. So maybe that's, I'm just rambling here. <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. Maybe it was too wet when I initially tried it and now it's better. I'll let you know 
if I end up with like a bunch of smudges at the end of the day or something. Because I do think it was probably three, four, could be even five months ago that I tried this. This year is just going so fast. Time for that inner corner highlight that I love. So I am going to spray my brush with some Fix Plus. And I'm going to take my highlight shade, which is going to be another classic, soft and gentle, and pop that right in here. Ooh, look at that, so pretty. I'm gonna run a little bit of that on the inner, I guess like third of my lower lash line. Okay, we do need to get back to talking about those 90 supermodels. Who was your favorite? Let me know in the comments who your favorite was. Do you guys remember when Nikki Taylor's sister Chrissy passed away suddenly? I think she was like 17. Ugh, I mean, that is just horrific. Let's move on to lashes. These are the MAC Goddess Lash. I have already trimmed these, so I'm going to pop these on and then we will finish off this look with blush and lips and highlight. What were some of your favorite 90s movies? I talked about my love for John Hughes movies in the 80s and the Brat Pack movies. But in the 90s, I mentioned Legends of the Fall. I watched that movie probably 10 times specifically for Brad Pitt. I watched, I think we all watched Titanic. So I liked Leo in that, but I wasn't like attracted to him. So I cut this goddess lash, goddess lash, that's sort of a tongue twister, into like a half lash, just to give my eyes some lift on the outer corners. What else besides Titanic? Oh, like um, Forrest Gump. I liked Forrest Gump, that was a good one. What other movies? It's really hard to do a video like this when you're going off on memory and you're in your late 40s because you've got that brain fog going on. So trying to talk about anything off of memory isn't that easy. Let's look up 90s movies. Dazed and Confused. How could I forget about Dazed and Confused? Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. He wasn't in Dazed and Confused, was he? Matthew McConaughey was in Dazed and Confused. Yeah, he, going back to heartthrobs, he was definitely someone I was into in the 90s. But Vince Vaughn, oh, he is so funny. This is not a 90s movie, but Wedding Crashers is one of my favorite movies of all time. It just, it cracks me up. Every time I laugh just as hard as the first time. This might come as a surprise to some of you, but I love stupid humor. True, ask my kids and my husband. We watch Family Guy, American Dad, stupid humor. It's my thing. All right, I am liking the way this is looking. For my blush, I am trying a new product for me today. I had a number of classic MAC blushes that I could use, but I thought, why not mix in the old and new-er? So this is one of the Glow Play blushes, and I picked this up at Ulta. This is called, the shade is called Blush Please, and I have seen this applied with fingers and also with a brush. I am going to try it, I think with a brush first, and I've heard a dense brush is the way to go with these, because they're kind of like a bouncy blush. pretty color. I chose this one because I saw someone on TikTok use it for that Hailey Bieber-esque just soft, ooh, soft sun sunburnt blushy look, which as a lot of you know is my favorite. Oh, I'm so glad I got this. This is a great color. It's not like a crazy pigmented blush. As you can see, I'm having to build it up, but it's pretty. I really like it. I've heard with your fingers you get more impact. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if you want to do it this way and get more pigmentation, 
well then this is the way to do it with your fingers. Now for highlight I'm going back into the soft and gentle that I used in my tear ducts and this blush is actually a little glowy already. Well it is called glow play so I'm just going to put a little bit of soft and gentle right here at the very highest points of my cheek right up here. Oh, this is such a beautiful highlight. No wonder it's been a classic for so long. We're always out, you know, buying the latest and greatest, the newest thing, but sometimes it's the oldies that are the best, kind of like those of us that are older. We're the best. <laughs> okay, I feel glowy, I feel blushy, and all I have left to do is lips. I'm going to take a wipe and wipe off my lips. Oh, I have my lipstick, but I forgot my lip pencil, so I will be right back. I wanted to use Whirl, but I can't find it, so I'm using Hover. And then for my lipstick, I'm using Viva Glam 2, which is one of my favorite nudes. And then topping that off with a little MAC Clear Lip Glass. All right, everyone, I am very in love with this look. I think it is like the perfect soft glam. Here is some footage taken with my iPhone in natural light. Honestly, I just love everything about this. And I think this makeup look is perfect for this dress that I picked up recently from Express. When I saw it on the mannequin in the window at Express, I immediately thought of 90s Dolce & Gabbana vibes. It's $98, but I got mine on sale for 40% off. There's usually some sort of discount always running at Express. So I will have the dress linked down below in the description box, as well as links for every product I used, including the shade names. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave them for me in the comments. I really hope you enjoyed watching this chatty get ready with me. It's never as chatty as I would like because I just find it so difficult to kind of explain what I'm doing and talk about things at the same time. It's just the makeup teacher in me. I was an artist for so long and a trainer, so I feel like I have to focus just one area of my brain and then I seem to have trouble talking about something else while applying makeup. But Hopefully you still enjoyed this video and taking another little walk down memory lane. I say another because I do have a couple of other videos where we kind of go back to those Gen X glory days. If you did enjoy this video, I really appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and join the Risa Does Makeup family. I do upload new content at least twice per week, sometimes more. Rarely less. Once in a while, there has been only one, but that's quite rare. You can also find more content from me over on Instagram and on TikTok. The username is the same everywhere. It's all Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.